Alright, so that takes care of those two modes out of the way in Toad's Rec Room. And I suppose we can now able to move on to the third and probably the final mode we can able to actually tackle through. And that is, of course, um, Puzzle Hustle. Because, again, we can't able to actually play Banana Split because, obviously, that, uh, you know, it only requires two Nintendo Switches in order to actually just to play it. But, unfortunately, since because we don't have that particular system... Meaning about the fact that we can't able to actually play that, so that could be also the same applies for what I've heard that in certain Let's Plays of the game, they don't seem to able to have two Nintendo Switches either, so I'm guessing the only option is now is the fact that we'll just have to skip that, so yeah, for the time being, we'll play some Puzzle Hustle, so even then though, the only puzzle game you've ever going to be playing through in the forms of Super Mario Party, and uh, as far as Puzzle Hustles, as far as the actual, uh, uh, game mode itself is usually uh, how it works. Uh, basically, all you need to do is it's very simple. As you can tell, there are plenty of pieces by the forms of the pixels based off from the different Mario universe. Like, for instance, the first stage we're going to be coming across into is, of course, the 8-bit Mario because, you know, he's, he's probably the easiest of the actual, like, uh, the puzzles, as you expect. And, as, and also, as you can see on the top right corner, it does tell you how much percentage you have able to actually complete it based on for what puzzles you're in. So even then, though, the, uh, the aim of the game here is the fact that in order to actually just to complete this puzzle is that you need to go for 100% complete. So, not sure you might be thinking that this might be a little bit complicated, but at the same time, though, it's actually pretty easy and simple and self-explanatory if you manage to get this down and over with. And... You can also just manage to play this as a cooperative aspect by uh, having the ability to be able to have uh, four Joy-Con controllers and especially noticeable with, uh, once again, if you do have two Nintendo Switches, it does add a feature like, for instance, for example, if you manage to uh, attach uh, two Nintendo Switches on, let's just say on handheld mode and you can able to attach them between the two sides, that way it gets like a pipe attachment to it. See, for then though, I'm assuming this might be something to do with also a cooperative aspect, but uh, that's as far as we can able to remember this for the most part. So, yeah, once again for this point, folks, we really do apologize with the actual uh, uh, the lack of uploading schedules in Super Mario Party recently, because I know for the fact that it's been a couple of weeks since we actually did manage to finally coming back into this, because obviously with a uh, few sets of Let's Plays we've already just managed to finish up with, like for instance, uh, I believe you, Sonic, has recently finished up with, uh, well, Klonoa for the Nintendo Wii. See, for Nintendo, it only comes down to now, are two Klonoa games left, which, kind of a shame though, because even then though, that we, excuse me about that, sorry about that, and uh, we were expecting we can able to tackle through, uh, you know, Moonlight Museum, but that was the Japanese exclusive game, and... We have a little bit of a struggle just trying to access to the emulator with the Bandai Wonderswan emulator. See, Veneno, I unfortunately seem to say, alongside with the forms of uh, uh, Mega Man and Base sequel game on, uh, you know, on that same console treatment. But uh, honestly, we could, we really wish we could able to do these kinds of games as a Let's Play channel. But um, unfortunately, it's not it's just because, well... We couldn't able to actually access to them on the emulator or anything, so that's kind of sucks though because we really wish if we can able to experience in them, but unfortunately for this Pinkie Pie is the fact that our computer doesn't like us access to the uh, the actual emulators to begin with. It's just, I think this is most notably because of the actual virus system, so I guess that makes it a little bit obvious for that point right there. So. Uh, yeah, today's day is the forms of uh, the 6th of July in 2019. We're really hoping that we can able to actually uh, finish up with this entire Let's Play of Super Mario Party by uh, specifically in this month. But um, it has to be waited until at the very end of this month because um, obviously because we need to be able to actually working on the progression that um, as, far as, as far as I'm aware, um, Duffy Duck has now going to be starting things off with... Uh, his redo let's play of the sequel to Super Mario Galaxy, which is Super Mario Galaxy 2 redo let's play. And um, as far as the actual uh, uh, progression that he was in, 
I think he actually doing he's doing pretty good pretty damn good actually. Yeah, especially noticeable with how the fact that recently he's recently finished up with uh, Walls 2, at least for now anyway though. But uh, we're not gonna spoil things too much about it because we'll let Duffy mention about this kinds of stuff. So even then though, for the time's sake, let's not mention about this kinds of stuff at this point in time. So uh yeah, let's just get into the forms of uh, some more discussions about the forms of Puzzle Hustle actually. So even then um, as you can see, that we did manage to completely done with, uh, Cheap Cheap right there. And then if you manage to completely done with that puzzle, you move on to the next level. So you can then note that the next stage we're gonna be run into is Toad. And if you, depends on what, uh, stages you're in, uh, most of these tiles manage to able to place it quite randomly, if I remember correctly. But even then, though, that this is actually the first time we've ever gonna be experiencing, um, Puzzle Hustle, potentially. So... And by the way, it depends on what uh, blocks or these uh, piles of blocks you're gonna be able to pull or push in. Uh, depends on what how how much blocks they actually contain. Uh, they did manage to have ourselves a, in addition with a uh, a different uh, weight to them. Like for instance, we got ourselves quite a few blocks on that particular body part, as you can see, where we're gonna be pushing or shuffling. Uh, basically, it's more accurately the lightest of the actual blocks, and then after that. As soon as we're able to actually deal with the head, it gets a little bit tad heavy. So even then, no, that's the only uh, thing we can able to discuss upon. So uh, once again, we really do apologize with the lack of uploading schedules. Well, not so much the uploading schedules by this point, but it's more accurately though. What yet again, our microphone is keeps on glitching every single goddamn time for this point because even then, we swear we really, we really, really want to get the new microphone if this is keep on happening. I can assure because of the actual core inside the actual microphone, it starts to go a little bit loose potentially. So, luckily we fixed that again. So, even then, though, hopefully this won't happen again. So, even then, though, I think this might be something to do with the actual inside core of um, the actual microphone. It's going a little bit loose potentially. So, yeah, that's as far as I can really think about this for this point, Sonic. You never know. But anyways though, a um, few things we want to explain about this potentially is the fact that um, recently about the fact that you know in Yukai Watch 4, which I think that game already, ca already came out on Japan for about uh, not too while ago potentially. Apparently though, that's uh, the western version of uh, you know Yukai Watch 4 is about to be announced on the west, but we don't really know if the release date is going to be. But my guess is it will probably be at some point in next year because we've already had uh, Yokai Watch in uh, 2016, I believe, and also we had uh, Yokai Watch 2 in uh, 2017, I'm presuming, with a some sort of a duology um, series of uh, Yokai Watch 2, and especially noticeable with uh, Yokai Watch 3, which we did have for about last year. So even then, who knows, we're able to actually find out what the actual release date of Yokai Watch 4 is going to be at. But of course, we're not going to get that game, though, on the other hand, though, because we wasn't really a huge fan of these series, I'm afraid, just because it's not my cup of tea or anything like that. So, anyways, that concludes the chain jump right there. So, um, and as you can tell, also, is the fact that uh, when it comes to Puzzle Hustle, there's actually a time system. So even then, though, it depends on what... Um, how fast you're doing with that particular uh, mini game itself? Like, if you manage to place in all of these, uh, you know, pixel uh, pieces back together, depends on what how quick you are. So even then, though, then if you're most able to place those pieces in a quicker amount of time, you're able to actually set yourself a new record. So even then, though, like for instance, in the beginning portion, if on the uh, you know, puzzle hustle. You get yourselves like 300 seconds in order to actually just to complete it. I'm not exactly sure if you can able to fail this once the time is up or something. Well, maybe it's because I really haven't expected the actual experience on this. On the other hand, though, because again, this is the first time we've ever going to be experiencing this uh, this mode potentially. So. And uh, the more you progress for the actual uh, puzzle hustle, not only does it give you like uh, more sets of amount of stages, but it's also the fact that it gives you like uh, a different uh, new records time, depends on the actual default. So even then though, like in the beginning portion, it always starts off with uh, 300 seconds, just so that you can able to get used to with the actual, uh, uh, you know, the actual mode itself. 
But then later on, when it gets to the point it's on the, uh, well, let's just say stage 12 or onwards, it gets like 600 seconds. And then the final few, uh, puzzle stages, it will be like 900 seconds. Because, well, I can assume because the more you do it, then the more puzzles we're able to now start to split up even more than that. So, potentially speaking, that um, we're originally trying to able to go through all the stages in this particular mode. But unfortunately, though, I don't think that's going to happen, though. Much like it forms of how it does it on hard mode, on river survival mode. Of course, we can able to play it in our own time, just for the sake of the forms of, like, just for the sake of completing them. So, even then, though, let's just go ahead and just deal with the next stage. In this case, Shy Guy, of all things. So, even then, though, we'll uh, get this thing to it. And, uh, I think we should probably just do it just as like so. See, but then, though, the easiest way to do this, though, is the fact that you need to be able to do this on the far right end right there. So, even then, though, if you do it at the right mo- Then, uh, you know, you can able to actually just, uh, do this with no sweat. So, even then, though, yeah. Alright, so now for the last piece. So, even then, though, I really do like the actual sprites with the forms of any, any other characters for this part. Because it's usually heavily inspired. Uh, not only by the forms of nostalgia memory, but it's also the fact that with Super Mario Maker, the original game does manage to exist with those sprites. Like, for instance, we got ourselves the Toad sprite from stage 5, and especially noticeable with uh, Daisy as from stage number uh, 7, I believe. And uh, same applies for Princess Peach right there on stage number 9. So yeah, these sprites are heavily borrowed from the forms of, uh, well from Super Mario Maker, so even then though, that's uh, pretty swell if you ask me. Yeah, because even then though, that it might actually inspire us by, um, you know, some other potentials going for it. Yeah, I know, Pinky. So even then though, um, aside from that though, um, other things is worth mentioning though, is the fact that, uh, recently, that we did manage to able to actually just to order ourselves the forms of, uh, the original Xbox game, which technically we've already done it from about a couple of months ago, but unfortunately though we just got wrecked by the the most useless items on our eBay department for that part, which is probably because of how the fact that I don't normally do driving as much. Because of this though, we just got ourselves the forms of uh, these little useless car accessories, which to me, that felt completely wrecked. But even then though, you guys should know what I'm talking about for this point here, and that game will actually potentially have to be Crash Nitro cards on the original Xbox. And thankfully though, uh, we get ourselves in much more very good condition as the forms of how it does it from uh, last time. Even though despite the fact that in last time it's gone completely rigged. Just because of the forms of uh, the different item they send us. So let's just hope that that won't happen again. Specifically in during the next weekend or so. And that was the actual point where in the next weekend we'll be tackling through the last mode in Super Mario Party, which is of course, um, Challenge Road. So even then, I'm really looking forward to that mode will actually turn out to be. Alright, so the next stage we have is the Spiny Shell, so... And also not to mention though, um, in during the later stages, specifically in, uh... The beginning to the very end. Uh, the more you do it, uh, in the beginning portion, it starts off as a uh, a smaller arena, but then later on, though, it gets a little bit more bigger, just for the sake of the forms of like piecing, uh, placing those uh, pieces together. So that could be a little bit more potential, as far as I can see how this will go. So even then, though, that's as far as I can say about it. And every time you're able to complete this stage, or in this case, any kinds of stages in Puzzle Hustle, you get yourself these party points every time you complete one. So even then, though, that's actually a very good way to be able to actually just to get some more of those, uh, you know, party points and stuff like that. So even then, though, there goes the spiny show right there. And consecutively, we're almost at the halfway point of uh, Puzzle Hustle already. So, but then again, there are 30 stages in total, which I don't think we can able to do this in this for the sake of this Let's Play. But uh, we'll do those on our own time. So because of this, though, I'm really sorry for this point, folks. I know that you most of you most of you have already done this by now. But even then, though, as for our, our channel's sake, I don't think we can able to do that. So even then, though, let's just move on to... I think this is stage 11, which is a Diddy Kong 8-bit um, sprite, based off from, again, um, Super Mario Maker, because of, you know, the actual detail sprites that has heavily borrowed that from one of those mystery mushrooms that if you scan into those amiibos on the forms of Super Mario Maker titles. So even then, oh, that's a pretty pleasant surprise, all things considering. So, but yeah, that's as far as you can be able to actually just to discuss for that point, Pinky. You really must have... Uh, 
explain things quite a lot for this point, really. Yeah, compared to you, Sonic, you're just simply just concentrating onto that, uh, specific puzzles and all that stuff, because even then, oh, jeez, I think I get a strong feeling I might actually get a little bit of a mistake right there, which, yeah, because if you see there was 60%, well, there's gonna be a lot more potential of fixing it, so I could assume that, uh, it might be, uh, his arms? Oh, wait, it's a little bit more further up on his head, so there we go. A new record indeed, and every time you complete those stages to topple all off, um, you're actually going to be seeing that little 8-bit uh, sprite actually just claims himself his victory animation, which is pretty cool if you ask me. And there's the 8-bit sprite of Waluigi right here, so even then though, Start. looks pretty promising all things considering, and even then though, it does almost, in, uh, feels very similar to that particular posing as the likes of how it does it for 8-bit sprite of Luigi, or especially 8-bit sprite for Mario, so you can read really tell if there are some slight differences between the actual, um, you know, 8-bit sprites, all things considered. So, um, another thing which one explained about this, potentially speaking, is the fact that with, uh, I don't suppose we've ever mentioned about this, is the fact that recently, that, um, Detective Pikachu movie, specifically on the UK country, Excuse me, I'm really sorry about this point, folks, because, uh, for whatever reason, I just simply just belch the most of the majority of the time, because even then, um, uh, this is probably because we actually had ourselves almost like a late breakfast today, because I know for the fact that it's been such a really hot day yet again, so even then, though, that's probably because there's also another reason why it just took us so long to be able to actually get back into more of those uploading schedules on, uh, not only for the sake of other Let's Plays and all that stuff, like Kingdom Hearts Final Mix, and especially notable with, uh, um, you know, Super Mario Galaxy 2. Well, usually Duffy is still doing Super Mario Galaxy 2 until Monday and Wednesday and Friday, according to what he said. So, even then, though, that way we could able to actually catch up on more videos and all that stuff. So, but of course, every single video has been uploaded daily when it comes to, like, uh, one day per, uh, you know, per day and all that stuff. Alright, so next up we have is Rosalina right here, so even then though, it looks very promising for all this sprite work. So, uh, yeah, it's not much else I can really talk about with, uh, you know, Puzzle Huzzle, honestly, guys. It's just that, well, you know, there are 30 stages in total, so even then though, if you really, really want to, like, uh, completely done with everything on this mode, well, you need to be able to actually just to play this mode quite often, potentially. So, even then though, that's as far as we can say about this mode, so, uh... Yeah, but you need to also need to work things out with the actual main death of it, so just in case you can't able to actually see uh, what is actually going to be blocking or something like that. Of course, this mode is actually has a lot of emphasis on uh, HD Rumble sometimes, because if you uh, can't able to actually place the actual uh, puzzle piece uh, correctly, uh, the HD Rumble tells us about the fact that that particular piece is wrong, so even then, though, that's a pretty clever idea in theory because of how the fact that, well, you know, Super Mario Party actually has a lot of emphasis on, uh, you know, Joy-Con controllers and all that stuff. And potentially speaking, when it comes to, like, you know, we've already mentioned about this ever since in Mini, uh, Mini League Baseball and stuff like that, about the fact that, um, what I've noticed is that Mario and Sonic at the Rio, oh, no, not Rio 2016, because that was on the Wii U and the 3DS, uh, for Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, might have a lot of emphasis on these Joy-Con controllers and all that stuff too. Well, what I've noticed rather than that though, Sonic, is the fact that what I've seen the gameplay footage of it so far, um, it does actually have ourselves multitude of control options. Like, for instance, the, uh, the Pro Controller was actually supported, for what I've heard, and especially noticeable with, uh, uh, the Joy-Con grip. And as well as, uh, Joy-Con sideways, you know, just like in Super Mario Party, but except the fact that, well, well, I can assure to you, it might actually have ourselves, like, something related to buttons only this time, because even then, though, the only way you can only use motion controls in that game this time, it was actually with both Joy-Cons, potentially, for what I've noticed, but even then, though, we'll might as well be able to find things out whenever that game's gonna come out in during this November, so even then, though, we might actually pre-order that game, you know, similar how similarly to how we how we usually done since uh, you know Mario and Sonic at the Rio 2016 Olympic Games on the 3DS and for the Wii U. But as for the other four though, we managed to got those games quite late because well, 
We've already had Soshi 2014 cents back in Christmas 2013, just for the sake of saving up some money and all that stuff. Mainly because we actually did buy it on, uh, you know, Sonic Lost World on the Wii U, as well as the 3DS potentially. So, yeah, that's as far as I can say about it. Alright, so the next stage we have right here is the 8-bit Sprite of Warrior, which is actually inspires uh, the WarriorWare Incorporated style, because, you know, uh, if you scan in the Super Smash Bros. Amiibo Wario, then basically that particular sprite is heavily borrowed from WarioWare. So, yeah, because, you know, with all this uh, jacking and all and all, and especially noticeable with the actual uh, motorbike glasses and all that stuff, so... You could expect in the part of the fact that they're trying to able to bring up the original uh, costume for Wario, but turns out it was actually like based off from Super Smash Bros. series instead. I understand that because even then though, that just makes it a little bit more of a different uh, uh, technical side of things. Because even then though, if you remember from Mario Party 10, where um, although it does have some uh, you know some references from uh, WarioWare Incorporated and all that stuff, with the actual like uh, his uh, motorbike um, head or the helmet was actually in there, but um, somehow um, well that's as far as I can really think about it and. Uh, Anyway, so, so let's move on to the next stage right there, and uh, now we have Donkey Kong right there, so now after we're done with Donkey Kong, I'm presuming we're actually on the halfway point of, uh, you know, Puzzle Hustle, so this might be potentially be one of the only episodes on probably is the longest video so far, well, I won't say it's that long in comparison to, uh, I would say in Mini, Mini League Baseball, which if I have to double check quickly, even though, uh, before you're able to, um, you know, look on that, Sonic. Uh, there's actually another thing we like to discuss upon for this point, and that was the fact that recently that Shantae 5 actually has some news and updates. Like, for instance, I believe they actually did include uh, the intro cutscene of the game, which it might actually be something related to the anime style, which even then though, it's a nice little touch, all things considered, but uh, obviously no gameplay footage, and especially noticeable with uh, no uh, release date yet, because obviously I get a strong feeling about the fact that it might be still in development for the time's sake, so even then though, let's just wait and see what happens until that uh, future time as far as that usually becomes. Yeah, which is probably true for that regard, so e even then though, yeah, I could assuming that this video might be potentially be a little bit more longer than uh, Mini League Baseball, because, well, if you really want to go through every single stages, that's fine. But um, as for the sake of our Let's Play at this point, I don't think we can able to do all the stages, though, because uh, it's all the later stages, most notably with uh, stage 16 and onwards, like, even then, well... Usually in this stage, potentially as well, but because of how the fact that most of these blocks are actually now heavier than the forms of how it does it from the past stages. So, now as a result for this kind of stuff too, about the fact that, um, oh, there's actually a nice little uh, Donkey Kong sprite right there, just managed to able to get himself a nice pose, I suppose. Anyway, so, so let's see what's the next stage. And the next stage we have is the, uh, a 16-bit sprite of Luigi based off from Super Mario World from Super Mario All-Stars version, fundamentally though. Or, actually, I kind of think about it, I think it's actually in Super Mario World because of, uh, if you manage to play two-player mode on that game, basically, Luigi's sprite is actually a little bit more identical to uh, Mario's sprite. So, even then, though, that's as far as we can able to actually just to say about this for this point. So, uh, another thing we really want to explain about this, potentially, is the fact that until it gets to the point until, um, I would say by the forms of in, uh, or actually, I'll, be, um, I'll mention more now until for any seconds worth noting for, um, recently about the fact that Kirby Art and Style Collection is about to be coming onto West until Spring 2020 and during next year, which it might actually contain some artwork based off from the previous Kirby's adventures, including uh, Kirby Star Allies, so even then though, it could be some a lot more potentials have been going for, and I really don't know about the forms of, uh, Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn, because, um, honestly guys, we actually rarely play that game, to be honest with you, because I know for the fact that the 3DS itself is basically dead at this rate, even for the first party games and all that stuff at this point, but, um, I'm pretty sure the 3D, uh, the third party company with, uh, the 3DS does not give up for its entirety, so even then though, that's as far as we can able to actually just try to mention about this kinds of stuff like that, so even then though, still. 
So anyways though, um, let's just go ahead and place the Luigi's head onto that. Oh wow, we just managed to able to come across into a very awkward shape. But we did manage to fix it in the end, so even though note there's the Luigi sprite from Super Mario World, as I said before. So even though note, that's a nice little, uh, cool sprite kind of thing about it. Next we have is Boo, based off from, also from Super Mario World. So, and as you can see right now, the arena itself is actually a lot bigger than the forms of how it does it from the 15 stages, from the past 15 stages I should say, because obviously now we can able to actually just to walk around uh, aimlessly, and it's basically noticeable just trying to able to actually just to put those pieces in the correct uh, spawning places between the forms of any other pi uh, pieces and all the other jazz. So yeah, that's as far as I can say about it. So anyways though, with the forms of uh, Detective Pikachu movie from the likes of uh, In Our Country for the actual release date of the DVD slash the Blu-ray version, I could assume it might actually releasing that until September 16th in 2019. So even then though, I could assume it because, um, well, I might actually give that a go if, uh, if I actually do like it, but I do know some people seem to be able to really love the hell out of that film. Which is very understandable because of the actual uh, Ryan actor from the likes of uh, Deadpool 1 and 2 uh, films. They managed to be able to make him as an actress as um, Detective Pikachu himself. But uh, you know, you probably get the idea for this point Sonic. So next stage we have is uh, Monty Mall right here. So I feel like this is where the, la the latest stages in Puzzle Hustle might take a really long time. And especially noticeable or difficult at the same time. Well, not so difficult, I'm I honestly gonna say, because even then though, um, there's no way you can able to actually just realize about the fact that, well, as long as you keep on messing things up or what have you, they should be fine. But um, when it comes to like, if you're really trying to able to actually go through like, uh, you know, accuracy when it comes to placing these little uh, pieces on the puzzle itself, uh, it might take a really, really long time to able to actually just to complete them when during the later stages throughout. So. That's as far as I can usually just try to think about this for the time, so anywho though. So another thing we'd like to mention about the forms of uh, uh, specific gaming related stuff, and that was the fact that, oh actually I'll mention more now until then, because uh, recently, after the forms of a new trailer just came, uh, just came out with uh, uh, Pokemon the first movie remake, in this case Pokemon the movie 22, Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution, or in this case, Mewtwo Strikes Back Remake. But this time around though, on the 3D CGI, uh, uh, computer generated, uh, kind of movie or anything like that. Which, even then though, it's no longer gonna be, uh, drawing sketch, uh, particular story. Uh, it's hard to explain about these kinds, uh, kinds of styles sometimes, because even then though, because we're used to with, uh, the animate style, because even then, though, with the actual lip syncing doesn't match up to the English dialogue sometimes. And especially noticeable with how the fact that with uh, the actual body animations and all that stuff, but even then, though, yeah, that's uh, multi ball right there. So even then, though, looks pretty uh, glorious than ever, uh, than ever used to be. Alright, so the next stage we have is the blooper right there. I could assume that the blooper itself might be really, really easy. And this one actually inspires from Super Mario Maker because I don't think Blooper doesn't make an appearance in Super Mario World up until, uh, you know, in the original Super Mario Bros. game, despite the fact that this is actually a 16-bit rendition of the Blooper based off from, you know, Super Mario Maker, as well as Super Mario Maker 2, which is the most recent uh, Mario game to ever release on uh, Nintendo Switch at the moment, until, you know, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 and stuff like that, so... So talking of which, is the fact that I've heard from some rumors out there about the forms of Anime Expo 2019, which is uh, usually today, or in this case, about one day ago, potentially. Uh, recently, they're about to be making another Pokemon movie, which is now Pokemon the Movie 23, and is about to due out at some point in 2020. But as far as I can gather, uh, not much information on here, aside from the actual, uh, the new movie is about to be announced next year. So, why is not every single Pokemon movie always attempt to be releasing in each year? Like, even then, though, it does that in general, likes it in the 2000s and stuff like that all over again, but I... So, uh, yeah, you precurs it there, how the fact that... I don't know what that, uh, film is going to be like, but I'm guessing it might actually bring back the actual anime look. And instead of, like, reusing the actual CG, uh, movie, unlike any forms of how it does it on Pokemon the Movie 22, 
which is of course Mewtwo Strikes Back Evolution, so... I suppose the final thing we'd like to mention about this kind of stuff, and that was the fact that, uh, recently, about during the likes of in that, that particular event or something like that, is that, uh, when it comes to, like, um, uh, Nintendo's, uh, UK department right there, and that was the fact that Nintendo's, uh, Hyper Japan 2019 will be on its way, in this case, the Hyper Japan Festival in 2019 will be on its way at some point in, uh, next weekend slash the forms of uh well specifically uh 12th of july as well as the forms of july the 14th so even then though well to be more exactly though july the 12th to the forms of july the 14th which kind of think about it that uh 12th of july might be the exactly the same day as the japanese version of mewtwo strikes back evolution uh remake movie will be on its way on japan so even then i just want to classify that so, um, when it comes to that, though, on the other hand, though, it actually gonna be including some of those, uh, playable debut games on that particular, um, uh, the UK's, uh, Hyper Japan Festival 2019. So these are the number of, uh, Switch games they're gonna be announcing as a playable debut, and those are, uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, because, you know, th those two games will be on its way until four months' time. And Luigi's Mansion 3, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening Remake, because that version of the game will be on its way in during, um, you know, until two months' time now. So even then, uh, well, not exactly two months just yet, because obviously we haven't made it to, uh, uh, 20th of July yet. And, uh, as well as Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020, speaking of which, and also there is, uh, Demon X Monica, which I... I do apologize, I do apologize with that, uh, that terrible pronunciation of that particular game's title, because, to me, I wasn't really interested with that game, honestly, because even then, though, it's not my cup of tea or anything like that, so, I must admit, though, guys, I do apologize for that. So, um, and another game they did manage to try to announce with the playable debut on Japan, or Hyper Japan Festival in 2019 in our country, and that is, uh, these three games did already came out from the past, but those are... Obviously, Super Mario Maker 2, and also Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, just for the sake of the forms of, uh, you know, trying to later on announce some of these new DLC characters along this along the way. So, yeah, you probably get the gist of this for this point, Sonic. And also, finally, by the forms of Cadence of Hyrule from uh, the ND uh, game from, well, from the ND games and stuff like that. So, even now, that's as far as we can able to mention about that kind of stuff. And, uh... We might be looking forward to that though, but until next month though, we're we'll able to actually see some more gameplay footage at some point in next month, which it should be on August with Gamescom. So even then though, because they always attempt to do that since, uh, you know, the past few years and stuff like that. So even then though, we might be curious to see how that will able to turn out to be, as well as the forms of uh, at some point in September, they always trying to bring up uh, the next Nintendo Direct on the during in September and stuff. So even then though, there's going to be a lot of you know, a lot of possibilities, I'm telling you, Sonic. There's gonna be a lot of possibilities there. Yeah, which is pretty true for that part, um, Pinky, because even then, though, that way we can able to tell what are the games they're gonna be, um, announcing, as well as the playable debuts on them, so... But the only things we're unsure of is the release dates between both, uh, Luigi's Mansion 3, as well as the forms of, uh... You know, Mario and Sonic at the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games, or in this case, Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games Tokyo 2020 and stuff. So even then, uh, we'll find things out whenever when uh, Gamescom appears, especially noticeable with uh, Nintendo Directs usually in September, or potentially on Hyper Japan Festival in the Dreamer you know, Likes in our country. Well, we don't know exactly when though, but even then, uh, we'll find things out on our own time. So for now, I think we should probably take a break on Puzzle Hustle, because as far as I'm aware, uh, the next stage we're going to be hitting to is stage number 21, which is, uh, I think, is actually by the forms of this particular enemy right there, from that piranha plant over there. But honestly guys, I don't think we can able to continue for this point, because we've only just got to show you guys off with that um, particular minigame mode, and I think that was about it for Puzzle Hustle, and same applies for Toad's Rec Room, even though it's kind of a shame that we can't able to show off Banana Split, because obviously, 
that, you know, the two Nintendo Switches only do the job for you. So, but as far as I'm aware, for that particular mode plays out, you have to use the, uh, the touch screen on those two Nintendo Switches. And then in order to actually just put, uh, do like a continued progression, it's basically it's like a time attack scenario. Where basically, um, if the more you are uh, fast or quick on that particular stage is like that, and you connect those uh, two same exact pieces of the bananas to each other, that way you should be able to actually keep in track of what time you earn. So even then though, that's as far as we can say about Toad's Rec Rooms. So even then though, there's not much anything else to talk about for this point. So almost now to online mode.